history was recorded at the time by a Spanish priest, Bartolomé de las Casas. The Spaniards made bets as to who would slit a man in two or cut off his head at one blow. For more formal retribution, they would hang chosen Tainos from a gallows frame, just high enough for their feet to nearly touch the ground. And by thirteens, in honor and reverence for our Redeemer and the Twelve Apostles, they put wood underneath and, with fire, they burned the Indians alive. The eventual toll of life was frightening. In less than 100 years, one million Tainos in Hispaniola were reduced to just a few thousand. This pattern of conquest was repeated throughout the Caribbean and all the Americas. What Columbus did to the Tainos, Pizarro did to the Incas of Peru and Cortes to the Aztecs of Mexico. Some people have said that this so-called discovery deserves another name, genocide. The, the conquest of the Americas was a disaster of enormous proportions to the Indians. Um, one has to say unprecedented proportions. It diminished their populations. Uh, to what extent, we don't know, but we know uh, dramatically diminished their, their uh, populations. It reduced their ability to maintain their cultures and their civilizations. It was, in fact, uh, as though a meteor had struck had struck their land and had destroyed practically everything, their history, their culture, their possession of their lands, their possession of their bodies. It was, it was a disaster. The term genocide seems to me really misplaced for relations between the whites and the Indians. That is to say, nobody set out initially to kill off the other in toto. The European initial effort was to get the, Europe, the Indians to work for them and they would have had been delighted if they had all survived, they all lived. That didn't work because of the disease problem I spoke of. Uh, then when hostilities broke out, and they did, uh, there were cases in which genocide is the right word to describe. One group was completely killed by, by military action. But that was relatively rare. It did happen, but not very commonly. What really killed the Indians was disease, and that's something nobody was aware of, conscious of, or deliberately managing. It just happened. They would not have called it genocide. They did not perceive that they were a cultural group attacking another cultural group. They were on God's mission to create uh, the, the, the place where God would return to seek his followers and carry them to heaven. They were, they were uh, willing to do. When, when you have the answers to all the questions that will make mankind happy, it means that if you break a few eggs, you're justified in doing it. And the Spanish were willing to break eggs. The Indians happen to be the eggs. Although the devastation of the Indians is undisputed, why isn't it taught in the history books? Suppose that you guys could write these history books. Okay? Suppose you could write these history books. What would you put in there? What would, what, how, would, how would it be different? How would it be any different? Yeah, Ethan. Well, are we talking, how would we rewrite it and keep national stability? Or are we talking, how would you rewrite it so it's just perfect? Well, now, wait a second. Uh, that's an interesting question. Is, is, are you getting at the fact that um, if we didn't, we, if the people who wrote the textbooks somehow began telling the truth about Columbus and about what happened to Native Americans, that that would somehow undermine national stability? The same way it would to, to cut down any of the nation's heroes. Well, let me ask you a hard question, Ethan. Do you think that, that the, the, uh, the history of a nation, as it's taught to the young people, should be built on lies? Well, not necessarily lies, but if you tell the better portion of it, then it, then it generates some patriotism. If you're saying that we came in, we killed some people, and so we, we claim this area, that's not exactly going to give people the greatest self-concept. Amanda? Well, I think that a, one way that we could um, teach the truth about Columbus and what he did to the Indians would be to now try to help the Native to help them, but because we're still discriminating against them and, and shoving them off and, <coughs> and really um, destroying their culture, that we want to keep it hidden. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, it has to do a lot with the 
like Europeans have been in power in America for <coughs> since America, you know, as America started. And if you, if, people, if it was known that um, at a young age, if children knew that Columbus had come over and invaded and killed all these people who were here before him, and had been successful in what they were doing then they'd probably want to know more about Native American culture. And if you started learning more about Native American culture, then you'd see how it was equal, if not better, than um, a lot of the things that went on in Europe and a lot of their ideas. America and the world have been greatly enriched by Native American achievements and wisdom. The American concept of democracy owes a great debt to Indian tribal organization. Many of our founding fathers, such as Washington and Franklin, were highly influenced by the League of the Iroquois and adopted some of its essential features in our Constitution. The gold and silver later mined by the Indian slaves in Central and South America allowed European capitalism to expand and fueled the Industrial Revolution. 60% of the food eaten in the world today is of American origin, including corn, tomatoes, peanuts, and potatoes. Indians contributed to the foundation of modern medicine and pharmacology by discovering the curative powers of quinine and a thousand other drugs. Most importantly, Indians were the first true settlers of the Americas, blazing the first paths and constructing villages in the wilderness upon which Europeans later built. Their legacy of living in harmony with nature is sorely needed today as the world grapples with poisoned land, air, and water. In spite of these contributions, Native Americans still struggle today to preserve their identity as a people. Indians have the shortest lives, lowest income, highest teenage suicide rate, and worst health and living conditions of any group in the United States. Is the oppression of the past still with us today? I think we have to understand that the frontier hasn't ended, it has merely moved, and, and the nature of the conflict hasn't ended, it has merely changed but that the conflict is still there. The Indians are still in their communities demanding to, be con to continue to be Indians. They, they, they want to be Indians. What people in their right mind don't want to be who they are. And, and that's true in the United States and Canada. There's tremendous voice by Indians about their rights. They want the, the right to continue to be. Columbus Day as a symbol of imperialism or oppression seems to me a very lopsided view of the reality. It means you put yourself in the position of the oppressed Indian. They were oppressed and they did lose their country, lose their territory. But uh, it is also the enlargement of the world even for the Indians in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, technological possibility, in terms of the reality of the society around them. As our society is not close to the Indians if the Indians care to enter into it any longer. How can we acknowledge both the Native Americans' experience and Columbus's anniversary? How do you guys think this 500 years, 1492, 1992, should be remembered? How should it be remembered? Think about it for a moment. Big celebrations or what? Uh, Isaac. I think they should get all the... Um, <clears throat> Columbus short stories and all those little things in those little elementary school year, I mean schools, and take them out and write new books and tell the truth because they're just living a lie. I mean, they think of Columbus as a great hero and all that, and just destroy the books and make new ones. It's a pretty radical idea, Isaac. So the the, the first one of the ways that we could uh, commemorate the 500th anniversary would be to start telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> a good start. Yeah. I think it should be like a Memorial Day for Native Americans and um, I don't know maybe like a, a National Awareness Day I mean it should be more than a day thing but like you know how you have Black History Month I mean I think there should be something like that for Native Americans because there are so many different cultures in just this country there are just so many different cultures of Native Americans that no one knows about. Columbus Day in 1992 raises important questions about the myth and realities of our history and how we see ourselves today.
The past cannot be undone, but it can be seen for what it was. The 500th anniversary of Columbus's arrival in the New World is an opportunity, long overdue, to reevaluate the European conquest of the Americas. It is only by broadening our understanding of the past that we can build a more equitable future.